This here is my computer. Like most other people and their own computers, I love the damn thing. It enables me to consume and create content, talk to my friend, play games and create software and things of that nature. I like to know how it's doing from time to time. Mainly just because I think it's cool, but also to check the temperatures aren't too high. Isn't that the same thing? For this I use rain meter and have some information on my desktop. But what about when I can't see the desktop because I have some software open? This is an SSD1306. It's a small OLED display. I use one to display information about my computer that I can glance over to at any time. The display I use is mounted inside my Corsair 4000D case using a 3D printed mount that I created. The OLED holder itself is by Daniel Rebsdorf over on Thingiverse, but I adapted it to mount into the 4000D case. There's a link to both Daniel's version and my remix in the video description. It's all good and well having a display to look at, but you want to know how it works, right? The display is plugged into an Arduino Nano that is secured in the back of the case in a little enclosure. The Nano is connected to the motherboard via a USB header socket, so there's no external wires. The Arduino is programmed in a way that receives serial data from the computer via the USB and then converts it to display on the screen. First, I'll talk about how I got the data from the computer in the first place. To get the computer statistic information, I used the Open Hardware Monitor library and created a piece of software I called Serial Sys Info. This software gets the data and sends it over a serial connection to a serial port that the user chooses. In this case, for my Arduino Nano, it's COM port 9. The data gets sent in the following format. The CPU temperature, the GPU temperature, the CPU frequency, the GPU core, the GPU memory frequency, the CPU load percentage, the GPU load percentage, used RAM, total RAM, RAM percentage, the time in 24 hour format, the day and the date, with the three letters of the day and then the date. The end of the data stream is signified by a new line character, backslash n. The Arduino then spits up this data and outputs it to the display. Here's an overview of Serial Sys Info. What's up mum, it's your boy back with another overview. Serial Sys Info, let's go! I have no idea why I did that, I apologise. Uh, this is where the metric data comes from. So it uses the open hardware monitor dynamic link library, the DLL file to, uh, apologies if I sound sick, I don't feel sick, I just haven't been awake very long, I think maybe that's it. Um, yeah, so, so it has a class of uh, metric data, it gets the data, and for each one it puts it into a, like an array, a, a list of stuff, stores it, here it is, into a list, adds it all to the list, and then just returns the entire list. And then that list gets sent out by serial over the port that the user has chosen for their, for their plugged in serial device. It doesn't have to be an Arduino Nano, it can literally be anything. So you can choose the comp port, you can choose the board rate, it doesn't really matter, it's default 9600. If it was too fast, it kind of, the data goes a bit funny sometimes. And the screen, depending on how you do the screen side, the data can get garbled and not update enough. So 9600 seemed to be fine when I was doing testing. It updates, this is how, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Update frequency in seconds. So every five seconds it will send serial data. It will also update this the same amount of time, if you have update to UI ticked. Uh, start on boot currently, in its current state, doesn't work. Make sure you've got all these correct before you start serial on load. But that doesn't really matter anyway because it doesn't start on boot, so start serial on load what doesn't really matter because when you open the software you're going to have to just press start serial. Because if you're opening it manually you might as well just press that manually. For now, anyway that's how it is. It's a bit buggy but it does the job. Save and apply changes. Uh, if you change any of this information, you'll need to save and apply before it will be active. Um, 
and then yeah you can st stop sending serial data and start sending serial data and it will send it out my my display currently is is displaying this information as you see earlier um file does nothing but minimize the train exit and help shows you the about page and the help file that you see earlier wow that's bright sorry about that i'm going to darken that down a bit there we go that's much better <laughs> this explains the gui exactly what i've just explained this you see earlier about how to read the serial data and then how to contribute on the github if you wish to github.com slash fuzzy tech show slash serial sys info um, at the time of recording this video it should be out but if it isn't it will be soon so yeah that's basically it that is serial sys info back to me with different visuals now that i've shown how that works let's check out the arduino code oh we're back here again okay well this is the arduino code of the other side of what you just see with serial sys info if you skip the serial sys info information you just want to see the arduino code that's fine you browse the internet however you like mate i don't care so it, we need wire because it it sends data or it receives data over serial and it also sends data to the screen so we're using the adafruit graphics library specifically for that screen it's uh 128 by 64 size there is a smaller version a 128 by 32 which looks like this one which i did use initially if you looked on the instagram you may have seen it at fuzzy tech show on instagram i sometimes post things on there little spoilers for future videos and stuff of the like how hey, look like that guy from star trek hell yeah it stores the received data up to 100 um, it keeps track of time with the millis if you know about arduino you know what that means and whether or not new data has been received so in the setup it starts the serial 9600 as we see in, in the in the other code that's the chosen speed you can change this obviously it would be dependent on what speed you want to push stuff out to this initialize the display sets the size of the text by blah, blah. just display stuff um, it enables it to be reset I'm not really sure why I put this. I can't remember why this was here. It's one of those things where I put that there for a reason and I don't remember what it was. Here it sorts serial data. If if there's new data, it will display the data and set new data to false. This is called from, I think, within the loop. We'll get there in a moment. So this is the bit that does the displaying of the actual data. As you see earlier, the data is received in this format. But it has an extra, it's actually received with an extra one on the end for screen blanking. It's either a 1 to blank the screen, or a 0 to keep it normal. At the moment, this doesn't do anything. It was used for, and it was going to be, and if you see in the serial sysinfo code as well, it was going to be there for, if the system is asleep, turn off the screen. Much like how the RGB uh, stuff these days will have an option, or sometimes have an option to turn off if the computer's asleep. As in, you know, it's just timed out. It's not, you haven't, not hibernation, I mean like, you know, actual sleep. Move the mouse and it will come back on. So this will split up the data it's received. It starts with, it stores a char for the CPU T, which is CPU temperature, which is the first piece of data, as we can see up here. CPU temperature, GPU temperature, CPU frequency, you know, as I said earlier. And it will store that up until it meets the vertical pipe character. And then it will move on to the next one, and the next one, and so on. All the way until the end. The blank screen one is there. But I'm, like I said, I'm not really using it. Here it is set. If it's set, clear the display. Otherwise, display the stuff. 
So set the cursor to the start of the display, set the text size to 2, display the current time, set the font size back to 1, so it's small again, put a blank space and then display the current date. Um, then it will create an underline for the date. As you can see, I've put the image there, you can see uh, how it looks. Set it back to uh, large text, print CPU in a space, then a temperature, then a C for Celsius, the same with the GPU. And then here, all this stuff that I've commented out was for the smaller screen. And again here, we do we put more information, we put RAM, and then again this is uh, blanked out, this was for the smaller screen. But we just display the percentage of RAM, that's the percentage of RAM that's in use, not the percentage of RAM that is free. And then we print percent sign and we display it. Now this is the bit that actually reads the serial data. So it starts obviously at zero. Uh, it looks for the end marker which is a backslash n. That when it receives that it knows that that serial data has been sent. That's you know that's done. Um, it stores the character it receives one at a time. And uh, it also has millis so that it keeps, keeps track of time. So while the serial is available and there is something coming in and there it's not saying there's new data C which is this this character here char however you want to call it car some people call it car and set it to whatever the serial says you know whatever the serial has uh, sent it clear the display if it's not at the end if it hasn't received the backslash n it will set the current index of whatever it's at to to that received information and then increase the index by one so this will start at zero it will store the data and then this will be one and it will store the data and then two and store the data and so on until it reaches backslash n and this is here just as kind of like a file safe if the index is bigger than or equals to the data length the index is data length minus one so it can never go over that 100 that we had earlier. Otherwise, if it's the end marker, put a backslash zero, which will terminate the string. That's the end of the string. That string there at that index will be this string has ended, backslash zero. Set the index factor zero and say that new data is now available. Um, ignore this was in serial mode. This was for something else uh, also. It's left in because it doesn't really do anything, it doesn't matter. But I'll, uh, I'll explain it in a moment. If the serial hasn't been available for more than 10 seconds, it will clear the display. Now, this can cause an issue. If you have set display update time to like 11 seconds, it's going to go weird. So this is something that if you're going to use this and you're going to take this code, this is something to be aware of. I, I know it's Maybe I should have not done it in that way, but that is how it, it's currently working for me. So, uh, yeah, if, if you're going to send data more than 10 seconds between data pieces, then be sure to increase this number if you're going to use it with an Arduino with this, with this code. This, again, was for the... Um, was in serial mode. So if it wasn't in serial mode anymore, if it wasn't receiving any information and just sat there doing nothing, it would display a panda image, which uh, looked like this on the on the smaller display. But I, I didn't bother to uh, port it over to the larger display or anything like that. I just took it away. And all the main loop does is read the serial and then sort the serial data, which we see earlier. The one we were just looking at was read serial and sort the data was the first one we see, which basically, if data is available, if it's got a whole new load of data, display it, which was this one that we see earlier. And that's basically it. It just does that forever. It just listens for serial. If it's received, 
it will display. Obviously, if it's something received that doesn't go in this kind of format, something strange might happen. I've I've not tried. I think it just displays CPU with a space and a C, and as if it's trying to display it, but there's no information available. And then it will just time out and and start again when information is available. So that's the Arduino code. Um, again, this should be available uh, in the description and there'll probably be a link to it also on the GitHub if that's available. If it isn't, keep an eye on it. There are links in the description for those particular, you know, all the information, all the, all the places you need to find things for this project are in the description, but it'll probably be on the GitHub also, github.com slash fuzzy tech show slash serial sys info but yeah that, that's pretty much it i wanted to share this little project with you and i hope it's inspired you to perhaps decide to pick up serial sys info if or when it's available and create something cool with it if you create anything cool let me know but for now i'd like to thank you for watching if you enjoyed this please let me know feel free to leave a comment below Take care, and until next time, bye-bye.